So there's a setting that all destinations have, and that is the destination settings. So this will appear right below the connector type, and this includes configuring how queuing should be handled for messages, if messages should validate responses, and queuing threads and reattempt tries. So let's go through the different properties we have in the destination settings. So first we have the queue messages, and we have three options. We can choose never queue messages, which essentially disables queuing for the destination and attempts to send the message whether it failed or was successful. Then we have on failure queue messages, which attempts to send messages first before queuing it. And if it's successful, then there's no queuing, but if it's failed, then it'll queue the message and retry to send the message. Then we have always, which will immediately queue the message and the destinations after will see this message with a queuing state instead of failing. This gives us the ability to retry and send messages even if the destination we are sending to is not responding. So next we have the advanced queue settings, which gives us the ability to configure how many attempts we should try to send a message when it's queued, if we want to increase the amount of threads for queuing, and this can allow us to send messages simultaneously if needed. We'll go over this in a second. Next we can decide if we want to validate a response, which will fail the message, if a response isn't validated, and in this case it will either be marked as queued or errored. And last, reattach attachments. This gives us the ability to automatically replace data with attachments contents before the message is sent. So let's first go ahead and see how the queue messages properties behave. So I already have my channel, and let's make three destinations. And we're going to make these TCP listeners and put them on ports that I know are not on my Mirth instance. So we'll change these to TCP senders. And I'll just change this to 9999. I'll test the connection, and it couldn't connect, so that's what we want. And then we'll set this one to never. And then we'll clone this. We'll clone another one. And then we'll set this one to on failure. And then we'll set this one to always. And this will allow us to see each queue setting field and how it acts. So let's go ahead and deploy this channel. We'll go in, we'll send in a message. So I'll copy and paste an HL7 message into here, and let's see what it does. So we can see that it tried the never first and then it aired out. And then on failure, it tried it once and then it attempted to send it again after it entered in the queue. And then for always, it just sent it in the queue and then it tried it once it got in the queue. So now let's go back and look at our advanced queuing settings. So let's go into on failure. We'll go to the advanced queue settings and we can see the first one we have is retry count before queuing slash error. This is going to set how many times we want to attempt to send the message. Now note if this is set to zero, then the connector is technically going to send it once when the message comes in and then not send it again. However, if we set this retry to one, then it'll try to send it one more time. So twice before queuing or erroring. So essentially, if you have a message that comes in, it's going to try to attempt it and not error or queue it twice if you have this set to 1. And then next we have the retry interval. This works in conjunction with the retry count, and it'll wait to retry the message again. So for example, 10,000 like we have here will attempt to send the message, then wait 10 seconds, and then retry the message. So let's go ahead and change this to 1 second. And then let's change our retry count to 2. So essentially this should try to send the message 3 times in a 3 second interval. And then if it can't send successfully, then it will put it in the queue or error it out. So let's press OK. And then we'll save this. And this is just for the on failure, so we'll only want to look at the on failure. So let's deploy. 
Now we'll go into our destination settings and we'll just stop this and get rid of all our messages. So now we can start it and let's go in here. Let's send in a message. Reprocess. So now you can see it tried to send the message three times. So one at the initial start and then it reattempted it three more times. Now if I search this again, then we can see that 38 seconds have passed. We do that again, and then again. You can see that it's upping this right here. But the always is still set to 10 seconds. So only 50 seconds has passed. So now let's go over some more advanced queue settings. So we'll go into advanced queue settings. And next we have rotate queue. This will give us the option to not hold up all the rest of the messages if one fails. So if we use this, then if a message fails, then it will place that message at the end of the queue and try the next message. And if this is enabled, message order is not guaranteed. Now next we have regenerate template. This will allow us to replace all the variables within our connector if it's changed. So for example, if we have to change the port within our TCP sender, after messages have been queuing, then if we have the setting off, then it'll still try to hold on to the bad port when it's trying to resend the message. If we have it on, then as soon as we deploy our channel, it'll replace that port and try to send the message with that port. This allows us to not have to replay the message and we can just deploy and the queued message will send. Now before I go into an example with a regenerate template, we have a similar setting for the filter and transformer. So it'll replace the filter and transformer as well if they've been changed. So let's say for example, we don't want to send a 999 anymore and the clients updated their port to send over 6665. So if we have this off, let's go ahead and try to update these ports. So 6665. And then always 6665. I can test the connection, the connection's working. Okay, so let's save that and deploy. So now if we go back into our channel, we can see that the messages are still queued. And it's still trying to send it out on that 999 port. So now if we go back and we edit that regenerate template for the on failure and always, Then it's actually going to pick up this new port and send it in without us trying to resend in the message. Now it doesn't work for never because that one isn't queued. It doesn't have a queue to where it can replace it. So let's save our changes and deploy. And now you can see that they're both sent and they sent over 6665 now. And all we had to do was update that property. So now let's go over the queue threading settings for the destination. So this allows us to send multiple messages at a time. This can increase the throughput, but be cautious with setting these queue threads too high because the memory could increase significantly. Now if we have queue threads to be more than one thread, then we can set a thread assignment variable. And so what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to send the messages in order and put them into their own thread based on a mapping. So a good example for this is if you want to send in your patients and have the patient messages being sent in one at a time in order, then you can make a patient ID variable and then add it into here. So this can guarantee that order even though there's multiple threads. Now last we have the queue buffer size and this just tells the destination how many messages we want to keep in memory. If we reach the limit, then the rest will be stored in the database before processing them. And as one message goes out, it'll be placed in the queue buffer. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the lessons. Make sure to leave me a like, subscribe, and check out my Udemy courses for more in-depth videos.